In today's episode, Chef Erica will show us how to make delicious kosher Persian lamb using Prairie Street Prime's USDA lamb chops and these fresh ingredients. It is cutting like velvet. That is the most delicious lamb that I have ever eaten. It is so good. Welcome to Prairie Street Prime Culinary Kitchen. I'm Chef Erica, your guest chef for the day. And I am really excited to be here today. I've been a chef for 25 years. I worked in New York City fine dining restaurants and I've been a culinary instructor and cooking teacher, food writer, food media host. I've kind of done it all for the last uh, 25 years. And um, I have to say that this is some of the most beautiful meat that I have ever worked with in my entire career. So today in the Prairie Street Prime Culinary Kitchen, I am cooking lamb and I am super excited because lamb is my favorite meat by far. Love lamb, love a good lamb chop. And what I'm working with today are these absolutely gorgeous Prairie Street Prime double cut lamb rib chops. It's a great cut for lamb lovers. This is as good as it gets. So what I'm gonna do today with this is make a Persian marinade. And what that means is I'm just gonna chop up some mint, some garlic, we're gonna use a little bit of honey, and then a little bit of balsamic vinegar. You could also use a, a red wine vinegar if you want, but I like the balsamic because it's got a little sugar in it and it caramelizes and it cooks down into this beautiful glaze. So I'm gonna get that marinade made. So I'm gonna take a clove of garlic, it's already been peeled, and what I'm gonna do is lay my knife on top of that garlic and I'm just gonna really crush it. I'm gonna smash that garlic up, and then once that garlic is crushed, I'm actually gonna put a little bit of coarse salt on it, a little coarse kosher salt, like that, and then I'm gonna chop this all up together. When you put the salt in with the garlic and you start chopping it, the salt acts almost as like a little abrasive, kind of uh, softens up your garlic and it breaks it down. Once you have it chopped up a bit, then I'm actually gonna take my knife and I'm gonna pull the knife across the garlic, just like that and make a paste. There we go. And you can see how it gives you this really nice kind of sticky garlic paste, just like that. So I'm gonna take that garlic paste, put it in a bowl. Now into this, I'm going to add some honey, some balsamic vinegar in there. So I've got my garlic paste, my honey, my vinegar. Then I'm gonna add some mint. So I'm gonna slice up some of this mint. So that mint goes in there, we have our balsamic vinegar, our honey, and that garlic paste. I'm just gonna mix that all up. Okay, let's get the lamb. So, look at these chops, they look great. Now, I already have salt in my marinade here, so I'm not gonna add any salt to this, but I will add a little black pepper to these. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on each chop and just kinda rub it into the surface, and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. If you're buying really, really good quality meat like this, you wanna taste the flavor of that meat. So use marinades and rubs, but don't use them in a way that overpowers it. Use your marinades and your rubs as a complement to the amazing flavor and quality of the meat. Okay, I'm gonna let these guys hang out a little while. You could put this in the refrigerator, covered, let it marinate, like I said, six, eight hours. It'll be great. You could probably even do it overnight. I'm just gonna let them sit for a few minutes while we make that salad. Now here's the thing about this fennel. It's kind of a hard vegetable. So when you cut it, you wanna use either a very sharp knife or I'm going to use a mandolin. And I'm just gonna get some really nice thin shavings. So there's my fennel. Now in with that, we're gonna put our citrus. Now, again, professional chef, 25 years, I do things a certain way. What I'm gonna do with my citrus is what is called supreming. I'm gonna cut little segments of my citrus. If you're not into doing that, just peel it and pull it apart or slice it up. But when you supreme, you'll see why it has that name. I'm gonna hold my citrus so that that stem end is pointing toward my knife. Take off the top, take off the bottom. Now I have a flat base so my fruit won't roll around. I'm gonna take my knife and just shave around the edges. What this does is it takes off the skin, but it also takes off the white part, which is called the pith and it also takes off the outer membrane of the fruit. Now, I'm gonna hold the fruit over the bowl to catch any juices, and I'm actually going to cut in between the little segments. So whenever I teach people how to cook, what I always emphasize is that you wanna balance your flavors, and the way you balance your flavors is you start with salt, and then you balance your salt out with acid. This is where the acid comes in. Now I'm taking this 
frame the skeleton of my orange and I'm just gonna squeeze it right into my bowl. That becomes the acidic part of my dressing instead of using like vinegar. Now I'm gonna grab the grapefruit and we could do the grapefruit the same way or if we want it to look a little bit different in there, I'm still gonna take off the peel. Of course, we're gonna peel it, but I'm also still gonna do the outer cut. So I'm taking off that pith and that outer membrane. Okay. To make this have even more visual appeal is now I'll just slice this. So I'm gonna slice that one up and I'll just gently lay those grapefruit rounds in there with my fennel. Okay, now we'll take those celery hearts. So I'm just gonna cut them so they stay intact. The tender heart of the celery will just slice up nice and thin. And I like to slice it on an angle. It just looks prettier. I think it holds up nicer in a salad. Okay, so there we go. The heart of the celery doesn't have the same kind of crunch as the outer ribs, so it works well in salads like this. Sometimes an outer celery rib can be a little too crunchy to put raw into a salad. Okay. Okay, now into here, a little more mint. Now this time I'm not gonna chop that mint up really small. What I'm going to do to this mint is just cut it into what is called chiffonade. Chiffonade means little ribbons or little rags. So I'm just stacking my mint up like in a little pile and I'm rolling that little pile up like a tiny cigar. And then I'm just gonna cut in little fine ribbons. We do this with our leafy herbs, mint, basil, parsley, cilantro, because it keeps those herbs from getting sort of bruised. Sometimes when you take your knife and you really kind of chop away at those herbs, you bruise them and you lose flavor and you lose aroma, you lose fragrance. This way, I get this nice fluffy little pile of ribbons of my herbs, of my mint. So in goes my chiffonade of mint. Then I have my olives, my nice green olives. You could chop them up, quarter them, slice them. I just throw them in whole. These are very tiny, so I'm fine with them uh, staying whole. If they're big olives, I might quarter them or slice them. Okay, and then finally, just a little olive oil. We wanna balance out the acidity in there and a little bit of kosher salt. And do we want pepper in this one? It's your call. I'm gonna say yes. Now we're just gonna mix this up. Get in there, give it a good little toss. But doesn't that look beautiful? Look at those colors. So the lamb's been marinating for a little bit. And all I'm gonna do now before I cook it is just give it the tiniest little dab. I just wanna make sure it's not too wet. The marinade has soaked in, it's fine. But I never like to put anything in a pan that's too dripping wet. But this is fine, just like that. A little dab and notice I'm propping it up on the edge of the pan there so it's not sitting in a puddle of the marinade now. So what I'm adding to this is a little bit of olive oil. I like cooking with olive oil as long as I have good ventilation. Never just drop your meat right into the hot oil. You want to be careful here. So what we always do is tilt the pan so that oil is going away from you and then lay your food in the pan away from you. That way if I drop that as it's going in the pan and it splashes going to splash the wall and not me. Take my next one. Again, tilt that oil so it's all in a puddle at the far end of the pan. Lay that protein in, just like that. And you can see I'm sort of wiping off the meat here on the edge of the tray before I put it in. One more. Right in there. And then number four, we'll just slide you in here in between, like that. Now, I'm only going to sear these for maybe a minute on each side because I have sugar in the honey and in the balsamic vinegar, and I don't want that to burn. If this was not marinated with those um, ingredients, I would probably leave it in a little bit longer to get it more of a natural crust on the meat, but I don't want that to burn. So now, I'm gonna flip these over. So always tilt that pan. Look at that color. See that beautiful color that we're getting? Looks amazing. And I'm turning. Now, I'm going to transfer these to the oven. If these were single chops, anything thinner than about an inch, I just cook it on top of the stove the whole time. But because these are double chops, they're kind of thick, or if I was doing a thicker steak or a big chicken breast, I would sear it in my pan, and then I always finish in the oven because the oven is gonna give you a much more steady, even overall heat. So in we go. I'm taking the entire pan, 
and I'm going right into my oven. So we're gonna let this meat cook for another few minutes and then we'll take its temperature, then we'll let it rest, and then we'll cut into it and see how it looks. All right, I think it's time. Let's check out our lamb. Remember, this pan has been in the oven. It's very, very hot. So be super careful with that handle. Use a towel, use a mitt. Okay, let's take some temps on our lamb and see where we are at. Okay, I'm at 135 on this one, so that's good. This one's a little smaller, it went a little more. This will be for my friend who likes a little more medium. And let's take a temp check on everybody else. All right, we're good. Now this nice big fat one, that's for me. That's mine, and that is perfect, dead on, right about 125. And this little guy, I can tell just by poking usually, that's a chef thing, you can just touch me and know what it's at. Let's see. Mm, yep, dead on, right around 130. Great, now I'm gonna transfer these over here, and we wanna let this rest. Here's the thing, this pan is really hot. If I let it rest in the pan, it's going to continue cooking and I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna put them now right on my clean cutting board and let them rest on the board. So we're gonna let our lamb take a little nap and then we'll come right back and we're gonna serve it up with our delicious fennel and citrus salad. I'm so excited. Okay. It's time. This lamb has had a nice long rest. It's been sitting actually for about seven or eight minutes, which is plenty of time considering how long we cooked it. Let's get plating. This is gonna be great. So I'm just gonna take my knife, hold the two bones, and just carefully cut right down the center of that lamb. And before I show it to you, I'm gonna faint people, this is so perfect. Look at that color. Look at that beautiful pink, even, medium rare lamb. Amazing. Before I put that on my plate though, let's get some salad on there. Now be careful because you don't want to break up your citrus segments here. So just treat them gently. There we go. And then what I like to do when I cut these is I like to show people that I'm really good at searing. I'm also really good at cooking to temp. So when I plate, I do a little of that, a little inside outside. And then, so I'm just taking a little bit of that pan jus and just doing a little trickle of that just around my plate. And then because this is a Mediterranean style dish, what I also like to do is sometimes I finish a dish with a little bit of really good extra virgin olive oil just to kind of pick up the salad there a little bit. So if you just put your finger, clean finger of course, and you do a little tiny drizzle of your best olive oil like that. Now, I think it's nice to just finish the plate with a little bit of pepper like that too. This is a bold dish with bold flavors. Just finish that up. I mean, come on. Is that the best lamb you have ever seen in your life? <laughs> let's taste this. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt that it's not gonna be delicious. Now, let's give it a little taste. I'm gonna cut into this top section. It is cutting like velvet. My knife goes right through. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of those pan juices with it and a little bit of that grapefruit. Oh yeah. That is the most delicious lamb that I have ever eaten. It is so good. It's just melting. I don't even need teeth. <laughs> it's so good. It's got really great flavor. Not too strong though. It's got a, like a sweet, mild, almost herbaceous quality. It's cooked perfectly, of course, I must say. It's so good, it's amazing. And with this little salad that we did, the fennel and the celery, which is so refreshing. Mm. I mean, come on. Life does not get better than this, okay? I'm happy, I'm done. <laughs> the end, <laughs> like, that's it. That is so good. Coming up next on the Prairie Street Prime Culinary Kitchen Channel, you'll learn how to make delicious kosher veal shoulder Moroccan stew. This looks amazing. Mm -hmm. One word, tasty. It's delicious. Thanks so much for joining me here today in the Prairie Street Prime Culinary Kitchen. If you love this recipe as much as I did, you can check out all the details below. You'll see the full recipe. And if you like our channel, please subscribe, comment, like, tell your friends. 
We post new videos every Sunday at two o'clock, so we hope to see you back here again where we're gonna be cooking some more fantastic kosher meat.